From quantum, I have learned to think differently about how to think. The possibility that you can see something in more than one way, that there might be parallel worlds. That we have this ability to create new realities. Where we've entered a far from equilibrium system, and so we're seeing complex effects. Is it a world of constant change where change changes? Quantum tunneling, the principle of non-locality, uncertainty about certainty. We're here to discuss the quantum effect, the Q turn at the quarantine station. There is hanging over us, uh, at least, this major application for quantum information to be used in the context of security. Why we sort of quarantined you here today is to start a conversation and we're hoping to treat this somewhat in an experimental mode because something's upon us, the quantum. It started close to 100 years ago and now is moving from the metaphorical to the actual. It's a wonderful venue to have this kind of event. I think, you know, we need more events of this kind that bring together different kinds of scholars around an open but focused agenda. So the importance of creating these moments where you bring people into not necessarily a clash, but a conversation where suddenly you say, aha, I'm seeing something differently. Leveraging the intellectual knowledge, the intellectual power um, to come up with a response to the quantum. Not just a response, but helpfully directed. There's a negotiation of what is, you know, what are the questions, how do we approach them, how do you present yourself? A lot of the cutting edge research is being done in Sydney, and no one outside of Australia seemed to know about this. By luck or what, the, the way the universe works, I sort of landed in this place where this kind of work would not be disparaged, as it might be in a mainstream political science department in the United States, but rather encouraged. And it is part of a dastardly plan to make Sydney one of the places in not just Australia, but the entire region for work in this field. Quantum turn in world politics and economics is extremely important because it reminds us that the world is in fact heteropolar. It's not just the structure of states, but rather there are different kinds of units, uh, such as corporations, city-states, NGOs, universities, terrorists, hackers, empires, and nation-states. The ways in which they interact with each other are, are totally different. Uh, there's an economic hierarchy, a political hierarchy, a moral hierarchy, and we have to take all of those into account. The role of images in global politics and how we live increasingly in a visualized world. I mean, most key events in global politics, from terrorism uh, to natural catastrophes, uh, financial crisis, street protests, we know through them primarily through images. For us in a, in a small navy, in a, in a small defence force, you know, 58,000 people, that's all it is. Um, the, the notion of, of connectivity um, is, is one that is, is crucial to us. For negotiation theory, I think it's, uh, it's quite explosive because uh, it means that you are ne both negotiating and not negotiating. It means you have to think about the end of the negotiations before they even have started. So it, it blows my mind. Control, wealth, power, um, those are all dangers that have a, a label of being um, undemocratic. Blind trust in arbitrary power is foolish in the 21st century, Fukushima, Deepwater Horizon, Lehman Brothers. I mean, these are kind of icons of power without any uh, public restraint. Maybe we are uh, coming to a quantum leap then in the, in the, in the ability of these atomized uh, elements, non-state elements, to, 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 to have an, a strategic impact uh, in ways that we just can't even begin uh, to predict. Gigacity, and a gigacity will be the 
world's first billion-person city, which will stretch from Shanghai to Beijing to, to, uh, to Seoul and then to Tokyo. And that will be one continuous urban corridor with over a billion people living in it, probably in the next 20 to 30 years. So that will present completely new security dynamics that are very different to the existing strategic and geostrategic framework. Science has been turned to with a lot of money and asked to provide a lot of solutions. And I'm a bit worried about this impulse that comes from the need uh, for a new technology. I think that this is about um, understanding technology, understanding where it's going and what it can do, uh, and using that information to make predictions about where we'll be globally. You know, and I think it, it's kind of, I think I would be scared if governments were not taking the steps that they are to try and understand how easy or how hard this problem is uh, and what the implications are. We invest so much of ourselves in these omniscient technologies, you know, hopes, you know, we hope that this drone is going to keep us safe. We hope that the NSA is going to intercept that message of the next terrorist attack. And we give up a lot, you know, in terms of liberties in the name of security. In that, you know, more diffuse, dispersed, smaller uh, threats uh, become empowered. When we study images, we can't just rely on one type of method. And from a quantum perspective, it is about giving up the idea that we can have a one authentic, universally accepted insight, but we need instead a multiplicity of different insights that can coexist. It's been a long journey for us to, to become more savvy in how to understand, uh, first of all, how to deal with media so that uh, events that really uh, are not hugely significant don't become hugely significant. The ability to read every single encrypted message, the ability to trade on stock markets at speeds and with um, a, a scale that no other power with, you know, that doesn't have the quantum capacity could possibly match. Those who have quantum power are going to be the closest thing to God's on earth. Complex systems started acting really oddly in the 20th century. We started noticing what people are calling the Anthropocene effect, that humans were actually changing their environment so much that the environment was behaving differently. The Earth shouldn't be able to heat up enough that it could kill everything on it. Um, but if it can, right, if these kind of complex phenomena are starting to happen in these regions that we can perceive, over time periods we can perceive, um, then maybe the, the whole foundation of things isn't a foundation. I mean, I think whenever you're talking about the creation of new kinds of biological organisms or parts or systems or redesigning existing biological organisms to um, develop new properties, I think there is always that risk that you could inadvertently create uh, an organism that uh, might lead to an outbreak or an infectious um, event that's unanticipated. It will make like, you know, the worst imaginings of our science fiction writers as child's play. Quantum war, can you imagine war being linked with quantum? It's quite possible. Science envy. I think, you know, the attempt to incorporate uh, quantum mechanics into the social sciences betrays a kind of science envy. And this might just be one in a long line of kind of scientific discourses that we try and show how scientific we are by using language drawn from the natural sciences. I don't think it's really a matter of trying to be a scientist, but in fact trying to bring in ideas, concepts from another discipline that uh, might provoke or challenge the way in which you think about something. Well, I think it's incumbent upon the university uh, for philosophers, ethicists, social scientists to be part of this. Think about Google Glass. Think about the prospect of allowing people to be part of your social network and to see what you are seeing even though you are not co-located in the same space. The beauty of the world today is that you can shape your career uh, and your lifestyle so that you are actually in multiple places at the same time. You can become in a way a quantum person and I hope that that's what I'm doing by, by being here. So I'm here but actually I'm not really here. The interconnectivity of the internet linked with the new neurosciences um, is, I think, leading to is a recognition that what we felt as children, or what we felt perhaps before we got forced into disciplinary ways of thinking, that we do make our own worlds. Uh, magical thinking is quantum thinking. <laughs>